Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. I hope that I myself am still a bit under the weather, but I'm slowly coming back to life. And today I've got a wicked video for you guys. This is your match preview for Chelsea's Premier League match against Manchester United at home at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea have lost twice to Man United this season already. Obviously that 4-0 defeat at Old Trafford on the first day of the season, which actually flattered Man United quite a bit, but also the game I went to Chelsea's 2-1 loss at home to United in the League Cup. We're going to look at both of those games in terms of lineups and formations, look at the team's recent results and formations, and speculate what's going to happen in this game. So it's going to be really interesting, and if you want interesting content, be sure to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not already done so, please do sub, hit that bell and notifications icon, because they tell me that's important. Why not like this video to support your Yan? Oh yeah, come follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram Lives. Alright, let's get into it. So, Chelsea didn't make any signings in January. United bought a Galo, who I'm not even sure will be in the squad again. Against Chelsea, but they've bought Bruno Fernandes, which is a high profile purchase who's already been training with the team. He will absolutely start against Chelsea. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, notable absentees before with Chelsea were people like Willian, but we'll get into that in a minute. And the Kepa question, too. Point being, this is a massive game. It can't be understated. It is your generic six pointer in the last third of the Premier League season. It's huge, man. Chelsea are home. They've been beaten twice by United already this season. They've got a point to prove. They haven't been great at home. United haven't been great generally, but for some reason, Manchester United have become in a weird way Chelsea's bogey team kind of you dig so I wouldn't say I'm confident now Chelsea are a better team than Manchester United I maintain sure they're stronger with Bruno Fernandes they have a very good defense and they have pace on the counter-attack but I still maintain Chelsea on their day can beat anyone and they should Man, they really should <laughs> rally at home and find some home foam, find some form at home at Stamford Bridge. But let's talk about the teams, what they've done recently, how they line up and speculate moving forward and preview the match. So let's open that formation screen. Right then, before we bring up the shapes and formations of both respective teams' recent results, I want to bring up the formations um, of the previous two matches that Chelsea have faced Manchester United this season. So I've got them on the screen. These are the lineups and shapes of Chelsea's two previous matches. Obviously, the 4 0 loss away at Old Trafford and the 2 1 loss at home at Stamford Bridge in the Cup. Right, you'll probably notice looking at these formations and lineups that the most notable absentee for Manchester United in this game moving forwards will be Marcus Rashford. He seemed to be the one who kept burying Chelsea. Obviously, he scored twice in the 4 0 win and he scored that amazing free kick as well in the 2 1 win at Stamford Bridge. He was a thorn in Chelsea's side. Obviously, sadly for Manchester United and the player, he is out injured. So that's a positive for Chelsea that they won't have to deal with his pace on the break. And also his superb 1v1 finishing if we are to have Kepa in goal again. Another huge notable absentee from the 4-0 loss to United at Old Trafford was Paul Pogba. He won't be playing in this game. He was playing in a holding two with McTominay. I'm not sure McTominay's fit again. He was out injured for a long time. He might be back, I don't know. Regardless, that double pivot was will not be there. As for Chelsea, we've come a long way in our front three as well. You can pretty much bet the, that Tammy Abraham will not be flanked by Pedro and Ross Barkley. So that's another change from that game there. Also as well, there's no Reese James in that back line, which is hugely important for Chelsea now. In the Carabao Cup loss at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea did have a relatively rotated side. Obviously, Reese James came in at that point, but we also had the likes of Mark Gurhey at centre-back, Caballero in goal. We had Marcus Alonso at left-back, Billy Gilmore in the midfield, and Michy Bashwai up front. You can imagine all those people will be rotated out, Asby Laqueta should be left back and Reese James should be right back and we'll have more of a formidable midfield. Now Michy Bachroy did score a really good goal in that game to open the school line. I remember seeing it thinking, whoa, come on, game on. But Marcus Rashford came alive, scored a couple, and again, better read to Chelsea. The interesting thing about this game is Manchester United played a free 
5-2 or 3-4-3 three, three if you put Lingard in the pivot as a 10 or force 9 or whatever. Now I think this is because they wanted to have the uh, onus on the counter attack and I'm not sure they'll be doing that again at Stamford Bridge this time around. I think they'll be looking to hold the ball a little bit more and use Bruno Fernandes to actually sort of dictate play. Obviously they didn't have Paul Pogba at this point so they needed a different game plan. Turns out everything worked fine for them. But just because this worked at that point, I'm not entirely sure they'll use a 3-4-3 again or a 3-5-2, especially against what you'd imagine is a full strength Chelsea side. All right, so I'm gonna switch the graphic now to the two latest performances from res the respective teams against their opponents. So Chelsea against Leicester and Manchester United against Wolves. Right, this Manchester United lineup is something that we could probably expect to see against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge tomorrow. Like I said, I'm not sure they'll throw Odi and Agarlo up front straight away. I imagine Antti Martial will start and they'll probably play a 4-2-3-1 I think I'll be very shocked to see him play a 3-5-2 I mean he could happen yeah, he might think it's a smart trick but to be honest I think with Bruno Fernandes in that number 10 role in the midfield dropping down between a quarterback and a number 10 I can see them doing that obviously they couldn't unlock the Wolves defense last time out but they'll expect Chelsea to be a bit more expansive as a team and of course Chelsea are at home I can see that too so I can see them playing a 4-2-3-1 now with Chelsea obviously we played a 4-2-3-1 against Leicester you can see in that formation there most notable absentees were probably Kepa and goal and Pedro starting over Willian. I do expect to see Willian restored to the starting lineup. Um, maybe Pulisic, he's meant to be like, you know, nearly fit, probably on the bench though, to be honest. And I do expect to see Kepper starting in goal. Now, the only big question for me is, will Frank Lampard deploy a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3? I have a feeling he might want to try and dominate the midfield. So, Kovacic, Kante and Jorginho all fully rested might be the formidable midfield three that he is looking for. More than anything else, I think Lampard needs to make sure Chelsea are in control because the thing is, Manchester United will always be good on the counter-attack, even without Rashford, with Martial and Dan James and Bruno Fernandes dictating play, Chelsea will always be vulnerable on the counter. So maybe Frank Lampard will play Tomori in the centre-back position because he's got the best recovery pace. I do expect Azpilicueta and Rhys James to start in the full-back positions. But people like Kante, Kovacic and Jorginho, that will be a better midfield to deal with transition and counter-attacks than having perhaps Mount in the number 10 role. Sure, if we had Hakim Ziyech now, I'd be like, yeah, play him in the number 10, play 4-2-3-1 or whatever, fine. But with this, I think Frank Lampard would go with Willian for the recovery pace. I think he will go with those midfield three players that I've said. I reckon he'll start hudson Adoy. And of course, I reckon he'll start Tammy Abraham. He has said he's still got a little bit of a niggling injury, but I'm almost... I'm pretty adamant he's going to play him in this game. So there you go. I've talked about the formations of both teams and what happened before. Just to give you guys some context of where we are in recent games against Manchester United. So let's talk about it a little bit more and get rid of the formation screen. So it's a massive game. Like I said, it's a six-pointer. Um, Chelsea need to win. It's one of those ones that perhaps don't lose. But really, Chelsea need to win because obviously they're playing Spurs up next as well. Um, Spurs look like they're better than United at the moment? I don't know. To be honest, they probably should be aiming to win both of these games. Obviously, they were both at home, as is the Bayern Munich game coming up as well. It doesn't get any easier, but this is certainly going to be a very, very testing game. Now, the way I think this is going to happen is, I think Manchester United will try and soak it up a bit, because I know they're away at Stamford Bridge, and the onus will be on Chelsea to try and create and hold the ball a little bit. They will be looking to release people with Bruno Fernandes. I imagine he'll start Dan James, not Juan Mata. Um, Dan James, who else could he play on the flanks? Obviously Martial up front. I don't know, maybe he'll play Lingard or Pereira on a flank or a number 10. To be honest, he could actually go for the 3-5-2 again and have just two runners like Martial and James to try and get in between the channels of Chelsea and play on the counter-attack. I don't see them realistically trying to play a dominant game and imposing themselves on Chelsea's Stamford Bridge because I think that would leave gaps and Chelsea's talented, creative players will be able to do bits and hopefully win the game. It is going to be a really hard game. I am going to give a score prediction. Um, 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 um. I think Chelsea will concede. Kepp will be back in goal, I believe. I don't think he's going to keep a clean sheet, but hopefully he makes like a statement save. Do you know what I mean? Like an important save 
to see Chelsea get some form of result. So that would be nice and hopefully back in Kepa for that. But I think Chelsea are going to win 2-1. So it's not going to be a big win. It's going to be an important win, 2-1. Um, I think it's gonna. it won't be an easy ride. This is my prediction. I'm not going to... I feel like I'm telling you what it's going to go. I'm speculating. I don't think it's going to be an easy ride, but I think they'll get over the line and it's going to be one of those sweaty moments where you're just happy the game is over. So I'll take it. 2-1 all day, three points. Hopefully... Frank Lampard can pull this one out of the bag. But what do you guys think? I want to get everyone's thoughts and opinions on this matchup. Do you think Manchester United is a bit of a bogey team for Chelsea at the moment? Because I do. I genuinely think that. How do you think this is going to go? Give me your school predictions. Give me your thoughts on this game and this fixture down in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video. That means a lot to me. I appreciate all your support. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new. Why don't you come and follow me? on social media at football yannick on both instagram and twitter at football yannick come and say hello that's it from me guys you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chalk in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't i let me be